with me today, Judy Salisbury. You have the conversation unfolding with then the stranger explaining the things concerning himself through Moses and the prophets, concerning this Yeshua, which they witnessed crucified. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. I'm Patty, and I have with me today Judy Salisbury with her new book. You want to show it and tell us the name? That is The Conversation, An Intimate Journal of the Emmaus Encounter. That is a story that all Christians are familiar with. We hear it sometimes right after Easter. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It is the story of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, heading back to Emmaus after the resurrection. And as these two downcast gentlemen, you could uh, imagine how brokenhearted, confused they were. I mean, just the beginning of the week, here they're hailing Jesus, Yeshua as King, and all this excitement by the end of the week, he is tortured and crucified. And now there's a story that his body's missing from women who uh, the Jewish culture at the time didn't really rely on them for testimony. And they're heading back, probably for the barley harvest, but pretty downcast because there was a little festival called First Fruits that uh, was the day of the resurrection. Yes. And Jesus is our first fruits, isn't he, from the dead? Yes. And so there they are going back, sharing these things with each other, trying to reconcile it all. And this stranger comes up and walks with them. So this book is from the very intimate perspective of the unnamed disciple. We know one of the disciples' name is Cleopas. But the, uh, the other one we don't know. And uh, so it's from, from his perspective. I thought that was interesting because the conversation, it says that the stranger who came up beside them shared with them from Moses. That's the right. The scriptures of Moses on down. So um, how have you woven that into the conversation? How have you well, brought in those scriptures? And all those prophecies, what he's basically doing is having them tell him, the stranger, what they witnessed with this Yeshua whom they loved. And so you have the conversation unfolding with then the stranger explaining the things concerning himself through Moses and the prophets, concerning this Yeshua which they witnessed crucified. So they share the account of the crucifixion and what happened. Well. Psalm 22 is the, that is the fulfillment of that. And so, of course, then he shares that psalm. And as they're realizing these things, uh, we have the uh, Isaiah 53. And as they're looking at the atonement and wanting to make sense of why he would have to suffer and die and so forth, uh, we have that. And so the stranger is quoting Isaiah 53. And so the book is, <clears throat> excuse me, heavily... Uh, reference. It, it's, it's a tiny book, you can see that, but it has approximately, well, it has 81 footnotes. Of that 81, only two are not scripture references. Wow. Those passages, those scripture references, are representative of over 200 scripture verses. I see. And I try to keep it as verbatim as possible. So people can sit with their Bible and look and, and see how accurate God's Word really is. And it's very exciting. So I'm hoping this is a faith builder. I'm hoping that this is an evangelism tool, that people will use this for their Jewish friends because it's all those objections. In fact, not only their Jewish friends, I would say even uh, our Muslim friends who struggle with the identity and purpose of Yeshua, this would, would help them in that, sure. Yes. What gave you the idea, or where did you get the inspiration to write a book like this? It happened during my own private, that early morning quiet time. And when I do ladies' retreats, I encourage women to have that quiet time with the Lord. Great things happen early in the morning before the sun comes up. Yes. And I was reading that Luke 24, and when I came to that verse, which I have noted in the back, of the book that beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. It just, it just hit me like never before. And it's amazing how many times we could read certain scriptures and it just doesn't really sink in until a moment. And I was just, Lord, what could that have been like? 
to have you do an apologetic of yourself to these two gentlemen, sharing yourself with all those scriptures and applying them to yourself. Couldn't you have given us like a little booklet insert, something that could have given us a window to that conversation? And it was like the Lord said, yeah, that would be nice to have, wouldn't it? And I just felt like, oh, you know, but not, not me. I couldn't write that. You know, somebody else could do that. And I really struggled with the calling because to, to put words in Jesus' mouth that yes. perhaps he didn't, you know, I didn't want that lightning bolt to come and hit me, but exactly. by the end of the day, I knew that the Lord wanted me to embark on this. And it's just simply sticking to the scriptures, but also the important thing is to uh, make sure that what I was doing was not putting any more in the stranger's mouth than was necessary to move the conversation along. But you definitely have a sense of his personality. Yes. You, you definitely have a glimpse of him. This kind of strong, steady personality who's very patient and just very steady. That's probably the best way to describe him. And there's an occasion in there for people to kind of have a chuckle. There's a couple of light moments, but it does focus on the death, burial, resurrection, the suffering of our Lord. Yes. Um, you had a special dedication in the front of the book. Tell us a little bit about that. I did. That is to Clarence Nagel. Clarence, we met him, in fact, it was shortly before I founded Lagos Presentations in 1994, and Clarence became a part of our family. He uh, was this little old man who lived in this, to say he had humble circumstances is an overstatement. <laughs> I, yes, yes, yes. I mean, he really lived very humbly. But he would write gospel letters, people with Jewish last names. He would go through the editorials. And uh, one letter, he would send me all these letters. And how he met me was he saw an article about me in the newspaper. And he wanted to make sure I knew the Lord. So he wrote me a gospel letter to make sure I knew the Lord. Wow. And so I wrote him back, yes, I love the Lord and everything. And so we went back and forth, and I thought, I have to meet this little old man. And so he would go through the editorial section. And one environmentalist person who has, you know, saved the planet and all this, he said, well, God's going to just blow it sky high anyway. And I'd be like, Clarence, you know, we need grace, you know. But he would walk up to people and say, are you acquainted with the Lord? And it was just so convicting. And after a short time, he came to live with us and uh, before he went into a nursing home. One of the last things Clarence did before he went home to be with the Lord uh, at 102 wow. was grasp the manuscript and pray for the Lord to bless it. And so that meant so much to me. And so this book is dedicated to Clarence. Yes. My oldest is what we would call. <laughs> wow. So you've written some other things and you speak. What was the hardest thing about writing? Book. I think just trying to be really true to the accuracy of what it was. And I was thrilled when Messianic Jewish Publishers picked it up because I feel like that gave it the authenticity that it definitely needed and, and the background information and so forth. I think that was a really uh, wise choice to go with Messianic Jewish Publishers. I think the Lord opened that door there. But uh, the hardest thing again was just making sure it just stayed as true and as pure as possible. Tell us about some of the other things that you're doing. Well, I, it, the Lord always has me busy, it seems. Um, I, uh, have, I wrote the only book for women on Christian apologetics, mm -hmm. Reasons for Faith, A Common Sense Guide for Christian Women, and it's kind of a fun way to learn apologetics, which when people hear that word, they get you know, all nervous about it, but it's simply giving reasons for our faith. When somebody asks us a question, we want to be able to share and defend our faith when somebody challenges us. And so to be able to do that, I thought a resource was necessary for women because we minister differently than men do. Yes. You know, a lot of the guys are very cerebral, and yet we want to minister to the whole person. And I think it's really important that we have a resource for that. So I have that. Is that a book that just a common layperson could pick up, or would we have to have part Absolutely. of Absolutely. Theology That's I wrote it for the common layperson to be able to grasp. A lot of the illustrations are, are funny, so you can remember them easy. God can use a former comedian, and so that's good. I'm grateful for that. And so, yes, yes. And then at the end of each chapter, there are suggested resources. There's questions for reflection, so that can even be used for Bible study if ladies wish to use it that way. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. Of course, they can find that on my website as well. Great. 
Well, I'm so glad you've been with us today. Tell us a little bit more now. Where is, tell us your website. How can we find out more? Again? Well, people can go to JudySalisbury.com. Okay. Uh, Judy White S A L I S B U R Y dot com, and they can see my resources and so forth, other materials that I have. But I do ladies retreats and youth talks and all that fun stuff, and that's a huge part of my ministry. I just love training women, helping women, and we have a great time. Uh, many times we'll go somewhere where, you know, the ladies like to go shopping, but they always get homework when they go shopping because they have to start a conversation with someone and kind of come back. And the reports that when the ladies come back, they're so surprised when they get out of their comfort zone. Just even a comment like Clarence would do. Hasn't the Lord given us a good day? And see what happens. And the responses that they would find. Somebody's hurting, they open up to them. It's amazing what happens. And those are fun retreats to do. Yeah. Wow, that would be that would be very interesting. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for being Thank here today. You. I really great. appreciate it. Thank okay. you.